What's going on guys, Victor here. Check this out. This is a fish known as a look down. Went out last night and absolutely crushed these things with my good buddy Marsad. So I'll catch you guys out on the water. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. See they're, they're coming up and they're eating this little fry. See there, there's a big yeah. look down. There's a big look down right there. See him? Yeah. So I'll like cast the shadow a little bit. When the snook are aggressive, they'll look down and kind of hang back. There's one. See him following it? Mm -hmm. There you go. Nice. So there's a follower right there. So you saw how I was kind of in the dark. Bring it up from the shadow into the Yeah, water. you know, they're, they're ambushing ambushing these little bait fish. When the snook are really aggressive, the look down will kind of slide back a little bit. But that's, you know, that's an average one. Do you ever throw them back based on the size or you keep them? All yeah, so it depends what I'm doing. I'll, I'll keep a few for myself, but I give a lot of them away. So if I have someone that needs them, I'll keep them. But that's, a, that's an average one. They're beautiful, you know. They are. They're, they're, Look, they're the very. Here, you see that blue? The yeah, blue they have a nice the iridescence. Bottom. It's one of the most popular aquarium fish. Um, for the small, small ones, they pay big money for these. A lot of the aquariums at, you know, Sea World, all over the country, they'll have big schools for these. Look down. You feel them thump it. They have that that projectile proboscis type mouth, and they're suction feeders, just like snook. But they're, I, I think they're related to African pompano, which you can kind of see. Mm -hmm. I would compare the meat to African pompano as well. But even this small one, people, the most common question is, you know, is there meat on them? There is quite a bit of meat, a bit of meat on these. You get five of these, which is not, not a problem. You have enough for a meal. So the big secret, everyone, what do you use, what do you use? Not much, nothing, nothing too complicated. This is a one... 16th ounce head with a number six hook sometimes i'll go smaller sometimes i'll go heavier depending on the current i have four or five look down rods here that i'm that i make and they have different different uh weight heads different size bodies on them probably overkill but when they get finicky which they do sometimes you want to try different things different colors this is four pound fluorocarbon i think i have four pound nano braid behind this and uh, i have variations of that on my other rods but it, it's it's fun so even a little one like that you'll saw it's uh puts up a pretty good fight. Yeah, so the way they sit, they're so thin, they could be right here, three, four feet in the water, you won't even see them. I am with probably the best look down fisherman in the state of Florida. Thank you, Marsad, for inviting me out. So what we're doing is we're going up and down the intercoastal and fishing dock lights and looking for moonfish, AKA known as look downs. Um, at night, minnows, shrimp, all sorts of little just fish and things will come through the lights and look down snook, um, snapper, tarpon, they'll sit on the bottom of these lights and they'll wait for those mullet or whatever it is to come by and they'll ambush them. So that's what we're doing. We have these super tiny little, these are like little soft plastics with a little jig head, real light leader, four pound fluorocarbon. Watch this. What I've been doing is I've been letting it sink all the way to the bottom and I kind of just jig it like this. Sometimes you can see them eat it on top, but they seem to be kind of shy and want it on bottom right now. There it is, right there. See, that was on bottom, jigging it on bottom. These little fish, they fight, they fight good. They have those big broad, oh, that one came off. They use those big broad bodies and they'll kind of pinwheel like a tuna. And sometimes it's better to cast in the dark here in the shadows. Wouldn't you say, Marsa? Yeah, for sure. Just like any other predatory fish, they'll sit in the shadow line, try to ambush. A lot of times you'll just see them out here in the shadow out of the corner of your eye. There it is. Uh oh. Let him play me. He's not like that. Oh, he came off. Alright, we're gonna go try another spot. So, no secret spots. Look down like moving water. Uh, some decent depth. I've never caught them less than, I don't know, three feet at least. But good moving water. And their bodies are very thin and streamlined. So, they can actually hang in pretty significant current. So an inlet, even though it's it's a lot of current, a lot of fish will kind of stay on the lee side of the current. Look down, they're cool with it. They'll sit right in the shadow line, the span across the bridge, and they'll be sitting there in the dark waiting for shrimp and minnows to come by, and they'll pop. It'll sound like a small snook. Oh, oh my gosh! Did you see that one? He smacked it. That's a good one. Just play it nice. And oh easy. yeah. No, that's a good one. You guys, don't underestimate the look down. They pull. They pull good, especially on this light gear. And these rods are really enjoyable to fish, too. That's look at this one. one. Yeah, one That's another slab. That's a good one. They have this mouth that 
shoots out like that. Look at that. They have a very big mouth for their size. I mean, they can eat a, a good size shrimp, a minnow, sardine. Their most common quarry is probably shrimp. So if you're wondering if they're good eating, how many fish eat almost primarily shrimp that are not good eating? So we just went to another spot, but came back and just in the matter of like 30 minutes, this spot's fired up. Look at the size of these things. They're getting bigger. They are such pretty fish. I mean, you look at all the blues and greens and the iridescence. There's like purple. They sit in the current perfectly. They are super streamlined and thin and they can just sit in that current and that water just glides right above them. These huge fins. I think you can really appreciate them at night more with their colors. Look at all those colors shining. Got our sod on with the tarp and microphone. See, that's the cool thing about doing this is you never know what you're gonna catch. Oh, nice. Is this on the terrorize? Yeah, the little, the little baby one. See how long he stays on the floor. There he is. Full shark bait. <laughs> oh, he wants to come in the boat. This is the second time he's trying to jump in. Something else to chase him. One more. Lion's afraid they might pop off. It's only 15 pound leader. He's got him on the outside of the mouth, though. Legal catch. So that's one of the many things you catch in the lights. Snook, tarpon, they're all just waiting for shrimp, little minnow, sardines, whatever it is to just swim over there. And they'll be they'll be lurking in the shadows and as soon as the bait fish swims over the light, they just ambush it. It's pretty cool to watch. We got some on video, some not on video. Oh, look at these things, they're still alive. Yeah. We probably have like, I don't know, eight, eight or nine moonfish in there, certainly enough to do a catch and cook for you guys we probably hit like 10 or 12 lights on the way down here and we found them we're dialed in and we just busted out like four look downs in four minutes so let's see if we can get on this is a bridge right here you got the fender and you have a shadow line right there and then the moonfish they'll just use that little bit of light coming off of that side Not a giant, but it'll eat. But when they're chewing real good, I'll just smash the barbs on my hooks. And that way you get your grub back without too much trauma, and you can get right back into it. Oh, there oh. They are. They're up there. They Instant. moved up. They moved up. <laughs> Insta bite. You spoke it into existence. Not giants, but good. You get five, six of these, and you got plenty of meat. For years now, I've seen this guy posting stories on Instagram, posting photos of decks just like this. Check this out. Full flopping decks of lookdowns. And the best part about it is, can't wait to show you guys what we do with them as far as eating them. Definitely going to think of some creative, cool recipes for these guys. I mean, we probably just caught like 20 to 30. So on the way home, we stopped. Get a load of this guy. That's a trophy right there. They get bigger than that, but that's a good one. Victor saw him a couple hours ago and said, we're gonna get him later. Yep. His first cast, he goes, I think I got the big one. And he did, he got that, that giant. Oh, thank you for coming, I appreciate it. I fish for fun, but if you need an attorney, I do personal injury, but I tell everyone, just keep my number. Victor will have my contact. Sorry, Victor will have my contact information down below. Um, hit me up for anything you need. If I can help you, I will. If not, I'll try to find someone that can. But I do personal injury, and uh, I'm a pleasure having Victor out here. We've been trying to do this for a while, and I'm glad it finally panned out. Thanks for watching. So I will have all of Marsad's stuff linked below. Super good dude, a lawyer in South Florida, personal injury, which I know there's a lot of. That's your guy right there. Any fish, just so you guys can talk fish talk. I just filleted like. 14 of these things and uh, this is the last one actually. Marsad took some home, gave some away. I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to clean this thing. This is not like a normal fish. You can't skin this like a snapper or a grouper because the skin is so thin 
unless you have a really, really big look down, chances are you're gonna tear through it. I like to outline my look down, my moonfish. What I'll do is I'll follow that head meat, go all the way around to this peck fin, and then I'll aim my knife to hit this anal fin right here. This is all rib cage and guts. And then I'll just take the tip of my knife. You can use a razor blade. That's what Marsad uses. And you just wanna outline the very outside of the fish because you guys are gonna see we are just going to tear the skin off, but we need to outline it to do so. Now watch this. You take your finger, you can take a piece of sandpaper, pliers. This skin on the head half comes off real easy and then you're gonna start to see it turns into like a white film. Kind of like taking the skin off of a dolphin and it rips off just like that. Now, this stuff right here, you can't even taste it. It pretty much cooks out. Um, but if you try to do this after you fillet and your fillet's off the fish, it does not work out well at all. You need to do this before you take the fillet off. And I hope some of you guys go and try this at home because this little fish, this is about the average size look down we caught. You guys are gonna see there's a good amount. There's like three, four ounces of fillet on each Mooney. This is a six inch Dexter Fisherman's Flex. Perfect little knife for little fish and you guys can actually save 20% off. Use my code Landshark. Good here on the other side of the backbone. You need a little knife. You need to finesse the fillets because they are so thin. You don't want to ruin them. Just like that. You guys can see that's all rib cage right there. Now, you can't skin this. That skin is so thin, that's, that's ready to go. The only thing we have left to do is remove the pin bones right here. And that's it. Ready for a look down dinner. Catch you guys in the kitchen. All right, so we're jumping right into it. We're gonna do like a Middle Eastern style fish gyro, gyro. I have some homemade pita bread going down right there. You guys see they're a lot bigger than normal because we're going to do really big wraps. So this is the look down. I did not leave the belly sections on for this recipe, just like the long thin sections. So that way we could put them in the wraps and I'm just coating them on in olive oil on both sides. You guys see that skin like I told you, it's on there, but it's you're not even going to taste it. So she can film, she can flip. And if you guys don't know, Brooke has her own channel as well. Brooke is about to hit 200,000 subscribers. Where are you away at, Brooke? Like 1,300? Yes. 1,300 is all we need to fill the gap. Let's get Brooke to 200,000 before the end of the year. So I'm gonna have her channel link below, or you guys can type in Brooke Chris Outdoors. Yeah, do your girl a favor and get her to 200K. Thanks, Bank. You're welcome. Okay, so this is a little spice blend I made. We got cardamom, cinnamon, nutmeg, coriander, salt, pepper, paprika, turmeric, very similar to what I did in the last video. Wow. So these are very liberally seasoned. And we're gonna sprinkle a little lemon juice on here, and then a little more olive oil, the very ends. In the oven we go. No. Okay, this is the look down that just came out. Um, about 15 minutes at 400 degrees with that really flavorful spice blend. And then I just hit it with a little bit more salt at the very end. Now, we make our fish gyro. This is a little homemade tzatziki sauce. You take a cucumber, you mince it, some fresh garlic, tahini, salt, pepper, um, lemon juice, and that's about it. You go down with there, down onto your gyro. Iceberg lettuce for crunch, two pieces of fish. And you know what, we'll do more than that. We'll do three pieces of fish. Some tomato. And then red onion. And we don't have any aluminum foil or anything to wrap it, so you're just gonna have to improvise like this. 
Mediterranean style salad. You got grapes, chickpeas, cucumber, tomato, feta cheese, spinach, olive oil, honey, lemon juice, salt, pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder in here. I think it pairs very well with our gyros. The outside. All right, just finished up eating with the ladies. What'd you guys think? Or what'd you ladies think? Victor has made homemade pita one other time and it was absolutely delicious. He made like little tiny triangle squares and I think we dipped it into stuff. Into right, this Mike? stuff right here, tzatziki. And it was so good. And since that moment, like I've been wanting him to make homemade pita bread again. And we did it and we had these gyros, gyros, gyros. <laughs> We were all discussing how to properly say it. I don't know, but it was absolutely delicious. The tzatziki sauce, sauce with the way Victor seasoned the fish was out of this world. The salad, really good. Good job, Vic. What did you guys think of the fish? <laughs> really good. Yeah, the fish was really flavorful. I really liked the seasoning you put on it, and the sauce was really great. But the bread definitely made it. Good job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. This is only the second time I've ever had look down, and I really like it. It's a, a nice, thin, gentle fish, perfect for wraps or salads or whatever it may be. And uh, big shout out to Marsog for taking us out once again. Wish you were here eating it with us, man, but COVID. So um, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.